even till this day, like I'm way better than I used to be, but I'm very detailed. You can ask him. This is my boy Milton. Um, matter of fact, you introduce yourself, bro. My name is Milton. Uh, I just got to Georgia probably in 2019. Uh, first shop I've been in. This is my mentor. I'm 30. I'm 39. I just turned 39. I was 30. And this is my mentor. So don't get it twisted. No matter how old you is, you can always learn. And the stuff she gives me is invaluable. Um, I started cutting my hair when I was like 12. My mother used to cut my hair. And um, she used to do a little even all around, you know, little boy haircut. And one day she was gone. I'm like, hey, it's time for the haircut. She gone. I know where the clippers at. Nah, and I actually did a good job. I did a good job. I ain't know how to do no tapers or nothing, but you know, back then you should just get the points. There wasn't no tapers in the back. I'm just like, I look nice. So, you know, I, I kept cutting my hair. You know, I, I would always be in the barbershops, you know what I'm saying? Just being mischievous, being all in the streets. It was like a thousand barbershops. I'm from Cleveland. I ain't from here, I'm from Ohio. And, um, I actually got a license in Ohio and I got a license here. And um, yeah, but I went to barber school a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't get to learn. And mostly this lady taught me where she would um, actually, she would stop her cuts. And she would come assist me. Like, she's phenomenal. Um, she's probably, probably one of the dopest barbers in Atlanta right now. So, really listen to the things she say because, you know what I'm saying, she, she started her own craft, a barber code, you know what I'm saying? And I got my own business too, but I'm still gonna rock, you know what I'm saying, like you said. At the end of the day, I heard her voice echo in my head all the time. Like, even while I'm cut, you know what I'm saying? That it's, it's helped me take off. Take off, so you know what I'm saying? She's, she'll, she'll finish speaking if she, she got some time, I'll give y'all some more jewels. Yeah, so, um, you want to start? Yeah, we, we good. Okay. So, let me finish the background on myself. I didn't go to barber school. I did an apprenticeship. So I started in the mud. I went straight to the shop, you know what I'm saying? Straight to people not wanting to rock with me, people not wanting to give me the game. Um, and I really had to teach myself and really get it on my own, right? Fight a lot of pressures and fight a lot of mental uh, blocks. Plenty of times I wanted to quit, plenty. Like sitting in a chair, sitting in the shop, nobody want to sit in my chair for three months, right? Trying to and then being happy about making $200 a week, right? Like going to my lady, like, dang, babe, I made, it's Saturday, I made $200 all week, right? And like, so I really went through the true growth experience with this. Like I went from making no money to making almost $100,000 right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and I, I just cut hair. Well, well now I've, I've set up other businesses now that I'm able to, right? And I'm in a different, I'm in a different place of my grind, right? But literally right now, my books are full. The first, the first half of October is booked up for to the first half of October. Like I cut, I only, I don't cut on Mondays, but I cut Tuesday through Saturday. Like, and I cut back to back to back to back. Have a lunch, back to back to back, right? So, like, to what you said, you've seen stuff online, right? And then say you make 28 grand yeah. a year, that's nothing, right? Like, that's, what can you do with that? Yeah. You can't breathe with that. Um, and again, that might be a little bit of what people report, right? And that's something I want to get into as well. Um, but it's endless, it's endless. It goes from being setting your craft up, right? Like people want to come out the gate and charge fifty dollars a haircut. Yeah, that's sweet. I mean, it's because you're in Atlanta. You know the whole, you know, vibe of you know, get me paid for my time. That's cool, but no, you gotta get paid for your quality, right? So the first order of business is making sure your craft is up to par, and that's what you're doing here. I didn't get a chance to do that in barber school, right? And and the instructors and the curriculum might not be for teaching you everything you need to know about cutting hair. But that's why they got YouTube University. That's why they got other barbers. That's why they got places for you to take it upon yourself and try to level up, right? So you told me that you guys are in section of 
shop management, money management, uh, the, the, the everything besides cutting hair, right? Um, and I guess where I want to start is, well, first, you just came in. What is your name? Glory. Glory. Glory? Okay. Um, how long have you been cutting? Never. Never? Okay. How long have you been in school? They all, also, they all started in January. All started in January. And she okay. was the other licensed cosmetologist. She licensed cosmetologist. Okay. What made you want to, um, what's your barber license? Mm. Say it with me. Extra money. Say it with Extra me. money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's fair. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And I just wanted something different, you know. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's all dependent on you. You could be the barber that makes 28 grand or you could be the barber that makes 100,000. Right, I mean, it's hard work, but it's definitely possible. Um, and on the journey to making that 100,000, right, again, you gotta start with making sure your craft is right. But your craft can be perfect. I've seen barbers who are dope, right? They can't keep people in their chairs. They can't charge $40 a haircut because their attitude's not right. Their booking system's not right. Their timeliness is off, right? Like it's the whole, it's the haircut that, that makes you a barber, so it makes you a great barber. Is everything else that comes before and after the haircut, right? The customer service. That's why I'm. I don't have people booked up the way I do just because I can cut hair good, right? No, I have people booked up the way I do because I'm on time, right? I communicate. If I'm running five minutes behind, if I'm running ten minutes behind, I'm shooting a tech tape. Just letting you know, I'm running ten minutes behind. People really appreciate that, right? Like that sets a tone. Like so, when my clients go to someone else. They have such a high standard, like, oh, no, I wouldn't get this here with something. Like, dang, bro, you you 30 minutes late. You couldn't even let me know. I was speeding trying to get here. Got a ticket, and I didn't have to speed if you would have just hollered at me, right? So it's being able to be a customer service professional, not just a barber, right? Um, so I guess the first thing that will lead you on to the journey of making a lot of money in this, making a career out of this, is being professional through and through, right? Like... That's, that goes from the atmosphere you set in your chair. That goes to communicating how you speak to your clients and being an open, let, allowing your clients to be an open book to you. Right? A lot of guys come, a lot of women come to get their hair cut, not just to get their hair cut. I got clients that come and want to open up to me. I got guys that talk to me about their marriage. I got guys that talk to me about depression, right? Like real serious stuff, but they feel comfortable because that's the atmosphere I set for them, right? That allows me to set my ticket the way I like to, because of my professionalism. Um, let me see. Another thing um, that's very important with shop management, man, is your booking system, right? I mean, back in the day, you probably know, y'all know, like, yo, you go to the barber shop, you know what I'm saying, in the community, you sitting there all day. Still, still happens, right? Like, but, if you had to choose right now today, would I go to a barber that's fire, but I gotta wait five hours for him, right? Like it might be two, three, four people in front of me on a Saturday, right? Or if you can go to a barber that's, he's good. He gives me what I want. He's not the best, but he gives me what I want, but he's always on time and I can book with him online. You know what I'm saying? And I know I'm, if I have something to do, I know I can depend on him. I'm gonna probably go to that other barber, me personally. Especially if you cool, like if you ain't messing me up and it's just something, I, me personally, I cut my own hair, so that's different. But if I was a civilian that wasn't a barber, I'd go to, go there. Um, so it first starts with the before you meet the client, which is the booking, right? Which is how do they experience you before they even experience you? So I use style seat. So I book, so I make people book. I have policies on my style seat. I have a no show policy which means if you book an appointment with me and you do not show up to your appointment, I'm getting 100% of that cut, that fee. And a lot of barbers are afraid of that, right? A lot of barbers are like, man, I don't want, I used to be that. I'm like, they're like, yo, you need to put this policy. I'm like, ah, people might not rock with that. You know what I'm saying? Scared, scared of allowing other people to dictate the way my business is ran, then I did it. Then I realized, oh, I can choose my clientele now. I, I used to want to be a barber for everybody. And that's okay starting out. You got to get what you can get, right? But then you get to a certain level and your craft gets so good to where now you're choosing your clientele, 
the way you choose your clientele is by putting in policies, right? Like the people that didn't want to follow those policies, the people that would book appointments and not show up and be mad that I charged their card or didn't even want to put their card on file, I don't need you in my clientele, right? Like, not that I don't need you in my clientele, but I'm not the barber for you and that's okay. Right, there's other barbers that, that can assist you. But me, I get to choose my clientele and set the standards of who I want to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I have a no-show policy. I also have a late cancellation policy. I'm very flexible on that because stuff happens. I'm not a stickler like, oh man, you canceled 22 hours before. Nah, if you let me know ahead of time and you don't do it, honestly, all the time and stuff happens, I'm cool. I just like the respect of communication because I give that to my clients. Um, so that's the biggest thing, right? And, and this is all before you even think about opening up your own shop, right? Like you have to set these standards for yourself and operate so high and elevate your mindset before you even own a shop. Because I believe that practice makes permanent. We've all heard practice makes perfect. You know what I'm saying? That, to me, that's, that's a total lie. Practice does not make perfect. Whatever you do and how you do is how you're going to be. So practice makes permanent. So if you go and you want to open up a shop and you've never had a booking app, right? And you've never had policies and you don't know how to give a client an experience, what do you think your shop's going to look like? What do you think the people, the barbers that you bring in that's going to help you build this business, what kind of leader do you think you'll be for them if you weren't a leader for yourself first, right? So that's the biggest thing, how to set these things in place before you even think about opening up shop right um so professionalism policies um all these these two things are things that people experience experience you before they even see you right um services your services so when people book on, on my online right I have a number of services. I do hair washes. I don't do many colors. I heard that that's what you guys are on right now. But I have color, I have facials, I have, uh, at this point I should probably put on counseling sessions as well. <laughs> <laughs> but um, your services is what elevates you, right? When you come to get a haircut, you're not just getting a haircut. I used to own a barbershop, this is where he works at now. I used to own a barbershop. I left my partnership last year. And now I work in a private suite and I created my own brand, right? Um, and, but the slogan that I created at my, my previous shop that I own was, it's more than just haircuts. This is more than just haircuts. You, you're coming in, you're getting a whole experience. Experience is everything. So you come get your hair washed, you come get your beard washed, you come get a facial massage, you come get these things because now I can charge a little bit extra. That's how I can get to that $100,000 mark, right? So you have to set yourself apart. And this is all stuff after you've started to elevate your craft, you started to realize what those fades look like and you know, solidifying your technique and those things like that, right? So um, you have to make sure that your, your services match your policy, match your professionalism, match everything else, right? It all has to line up. Um, so yeah, I, um, let me see. So along with that, right? So now I have a client they book on my booking app, they find me, they book on my booking app, they see all my services, they see my policies, this is before they even see me. So now, another thing before they see me is the timeliness. So like, hey, I got an appointment with Summer J at 12 on Thursday, cool. If I'm running behind, shoot a text, hey, I'm running five minutes behind, 10 minutes behind, but I don't cut hair, the way my services are set up, I used to try to cut hair as fast as possible. Try to get everybody fast, fast, fast. And then I went and I realized I can't fully give you an experience if I cut your hair in 20 minutes. Me, I'm detail oriented. You could ask him, like I, I am strict on my details, right? So just recently, I cut my hours, my business hours, and I extended my service time. Now I can do that though because I have a whole clientele base. I wouldn't suggest to do this right off the bat. You have to get in the mud and figure out how to speed your cuts up, slow them down. There's gears to it, right? Like me, if I need to cut hair in 20 minutes, I can. But that's because I started out in the beginning and I had to figure it out. Now I'm in a position where I can extend my hours. So now I'm getting my conversation with my clients. 
right? I'm getting all the little dark spots in the fade that I see. I'm able to spin them around, look at them, you know what I'm saying? Take my time and relieve the pressure off of me, right? But that only happened, and it really only happened because I wanted to be more timely. When I operate like this, if I have a client that's five minutes late, that puts so much pressure on the rest of my day, right? Like I'm become an a-hole to them. Like, yo, where you at? You five minutes late. But then when I'm five minutes late, I expect them to understand, right? And so I had to figure out the formula. How do we avoid this? How can I give a grace period to my clients without ruining my whole day while still making a good amount of money? So let's raise our prices. Let's cut our hours and let's extend our service time, right? You can't do any of those. You can't do any of those and truly raise your prices if you're not being on time, if you're not giving them quality service, if you're not giving them experience. Right, something that's longevity. Like I, I have clients I've been cutting for since I've started. I have clients that drive from Powder Springs to come see me. I have clients that come from Augusta every two weeks to come see me. Right, but it's because of these standards that I'm setting. Right, so timeliness is of the utmost importance when it comes to this. Because people, you don't want your time being messed with. Right, so we have to respect everybody else's time that sits in our chair. Um, big thing for me. Right after, now they're sitting in my chair. I extended my hours time, right? They got a whole 45 minutes for me, right? And now my focus is quality over quantity. My focus is, again, the experience, the conversation behind what I'm doing, right? This is all things before I even pick up a clipper, right? It's the things that make me a quality barber, right? So at this point, you gotta choose what makes you a quality barber. What do you wanna offer your clients that sets you apart from anybody else? Right? Or it puts you in a specific bracket that not many people can touch. Right? Like it takes a lot for a man to open up. I'm not pretty sure you guys can vouch for that. Right? So imagine being able to have an ex give an experience where a guy is so comfortable with you that he's all opening up to you about depression. Right? The biggest thing people say that you cannot change the way someone thinks about themselves. But as a barber, you can. Right? Like I literally have people come sit in my chair and they, I see it in their face, we talk and everything. I have men tear up in my chair just because of conversations and the words I'm pouring into them. So not only did I feel their soul, but I replenished their look as well. That's, un, that's un, unmatchable. Like you can't even fathom that, you can't get that anywhere, right? But that was something that was big for me. It's like, okay, I need to do this in order to set me apart from a lot of people, right? So quality over quantity will win forever, forever. That's that's a code. Quality over quantity. Quality over quantity will be unmatched. Um, now, all of this leads to just having high standards. Having where, yo, I know I'm going to Scott. I know I know what to expect. So if I go sit in someone else's chair, I'm thinking about Scott, right? I'm like. Uh, everything the other barber is doing, I'm like, Scott ain't gonna do that. Scott don't do that, right? But I've had to embed those high standards into my clients every day, right? It's hard work. Like, this stuff is not easy, bro. Like, the grind behind this, like, like I said, there's been plenty of times I wanted to quit. Last year, I was about to quit cutting hair. Last year, I was about to quit going, cutting hair and go to the military on everything I love, right? Again, I'm making $100,000. I have clients booked for weeks, right? That burnout is real though. If you don't set those boundaries and balances in your life, once you get to the level of what I'm talking about, it's, it's gonna burn you out. You know what I'm saying? And all of this, and what I'm saying right now, because you guys aren't truly even outside of the barbershop, I mean, outside of the barber school, will even, you won't fully understand but I say all these things because there's gonna be a point if you stick to this and you get past those pressures and you get past those mental blocks and you get past the hard stuff, right? You gonna, the things I'm saying are gonna to apply to a lot of stuff, right? So just take everything I'm saying and put it in your back pocket because you might not need, need to use it now, but that's need to be something in your arsenal that you need to use later. Um, so yeah, man, like all of these things need to happen before you even think about starting a shop. Does anybody in here want to open up a shop one day? Just build the side. Build the side. Um, what you want to do? What's the end goal? What's the what? Why do you? What is your why? Uh, really, my 
about why I'm here. I'm not. My son lives in Philly. Okay. My daughter stay here. So my wife to have that time where I can be with my son. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's easier for I can deal with my daughter mm -hmm. and stay in one rock. Yeah. Um, my son. Is, so I need my wife like to be able to get him more often or have the time for him. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my my thing. But I don't know if I really want to own the shop. Man. That's just dealing with other people. That's no, that's fair. I ain't really. I say my I know me, mm -hmm. so I know if I what I want is what I want, mm -hmm. and I'm. That's, no, that's real. That's real. And I know, and it ain't, it ain't fair to everybody. You know, mm -hmm. my attitude ain't fair to you. So I don't want to get us. Let's just be friends. And <laughs> right. Right. Not worry about all that. No, that's that's real. That's real. Ain't nothing wrong with that either. You can, you don't have to be a, a shop owner to make bread. Doing you know what we doing, right? So just just remember that. What's your why? What is the big picture for you with this? Something passed down generation. Mm -hmm. Like, I have a five-year-old son and a 16-year-old stepson. He, the 16-year-olds are upset with the business, but they're married on the business. But um, my youngest son, it'll be something I can pass down. Even if he decides it's what he wants to do or not, at least it's something that I could have handed down. And it's, so, a shop, I don't know yet. It really depends. Where I live, it's kind of complicated. Like, I live way up in North Georgia. So okay. it's, I drive like an hour, hour and 15 minutes to get here. Okay. So, and the only reason I do it is so I get paid for my GI Bill. Mm -hmm. But there's a shop there, it's like 95 years old, but it's really been the past, I think she bought it 10 years ago, and everybody in there is cosmetology. Mm -hmm. But, and there's really nothing that comes out of there that's exceptional. Like, it's just typical, basic white guy haircuts, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And there's there's nothing that, if, if people have to wait too long, I'm just going to do a great place, they don't care. Yeah. You know, the, the price is on, I mean, they only charge like 20 bucks a haircut, and it's whatever, it's in and out, that's all they do. Mm -hmm. And people, like, where well, they don't know what they're missing because they've never had anything like that out there. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the, like the facials, the, the beard shapes and stuff like that. You pay there, they'll just like kind of slightly trim your beard. They don't know anything about. That's why I've kind of started cutting mine off. It's just kind of messing with like, you know, blending this up. Like there, they'll yeah. just kind of take off the ends. Yeah. You don't really know. And I didn't know any better until I got a beard and started watching YouTube, right? So mm -hmm. the beard is kind of what kind of another thing that kind of led me to barbering because it got into trying to figure out, you know, and everybody up there has beards. Yeah. And they've always, people in the last month my, both my kids play football so when I'm at the games they're like oh I heard you're going to barber school and there's not another there's uh, one male barber there and we have obviously we have a very high white population and then we have we're like 80% white and the rest is black and then all of the, the black guys in the back and he goes all the black guys come in there and go to him so yeah. I'm like I want to sit I, I already told him I told the shop owner I have a chair next to him so I can learn from him because I can cut. I've been cutting like five or six people now, but it's just basic haircuts like mine. And then I'm like, I want to sit next to him. He's like, good work. And I was like, I got five or six guys that let like, you cut their hair. They're, they're older, they don't care too much, and we'll make sure it's good. So, but beyond that, like, I'd like to open something there because the place, like, the shop there is real run down. Like, no one's taking care of it. Mm -hmm. It's right on the square. There's a lot of trust. Yeah. in that area um, but I, I just think I've had like one guy that owns two daycares up there and his wife he's like I'm looking to invest in something like that so he's like if you're wanting to open something let me know down the road but I definitely want to go in get some cuts under my belt at that yeah. shop that's the only place to get your hair cut there you okay. go to Fantastic Sam's or Drive way down the road mm -hmm. somewhere else so it's growing up there. So. so potentially 
one day? Yeah, you know like I'm filling it out. Like, okay. I, I just, you know, I kind of realized and started putting some numbers together, <clears throat> and it's like, unless you can still make great money without owning your own shop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The only yeah. thing that I don't like about the shop is they don't like if I get to a point to where I'm good enough and you can want to come in and they wait on like now there's no booking there's nothing like it's just you come in you sit mm -hmm. and call it yeah and people will wait two or three hours sometimes mm -hmm. just to get in with one person mm -hmm. and I'll pretty much be the only other male in there yeah where I'm at guys are weird about it up there and they're like oh you want my hair cut by him yeah you know what I mean yeah the old, especially the older guys There's no one up there that cuts hair because that's the only place to go in a month. And it's a college <laughs> town. That sounds like a, a military college town. That's, all, that's a wide open door for you, man. Yeah. That's and I started seeing it like opening my own shop, but at mm -hmm. the same time, like, if I, and my wife is my breadwinner by far. She's been in the same job for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she kills my paycheck. same range you are, six figure, mm -hmm. and it's, that's been a blessing to me, because it allows me to, uh, kind of, yeah, like I can, you know, play with her money and yeah. stuff, so then she doesn't care, yeah. but, and then the GI Bill, and I was like, this is a wide open market up here, it's crazy, and it's a, it's North Georgia College, up there, and it's a big school, mm -hmm. takes up literally 70% of our town, yeah. And the co and I, I've talked to a lot of the college kids recently and they're driving 30, 45 minutes to come here yeah. at Forsyth County to get their haircuts or over to Gainesville. Hmm. So I'm just like yeah, it's crazy. Wow. When you hit so, when you hit some walls, because you don't hit some yeah. walls and some doubts for this journey, mm -hmm. right? Remember that. Remember how wide open show market is man and, and how wide open the possibilities for you are oh, yeah. it's it's amazing oh, how you yeah. doing man yeah, how you doing? summer j man nice to meet you what's your name cj cj mm -hmm. nice to meet you man um so lori that's right you say you want to open up a shop yeah yeah what makes you want to open up a shop Anybody that wants to open up a shop or any other business, buy a home, anything, right? Have some type of real substance of life. One thing you have to do is pay taxes. Like you said, you probably looked it up. It was like 28 grand. That's yeah. probably what they reported. And I used to think like, dang, bad. I, I make cash. I got to report all my stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm living the life. Don't play with them. But you also really can't get anything without paying your dues, right? Like, I bought a home, bought my first home at the age of 25, right? 
years before that I understood this. I got out that mindset of I ain't gotta really, you know, tell them what I'm making. I got out of that quick. Right? There's obviously there's a game you play, right? But in actuality, man, whether you wanna open up a shop, whether you wanna give your kids a home to live in, whether you wanna buy time for yourself and live a more free life, you can do that with cutting hair, but because we are such a cash flow, well, not nowadays, we're such a, we have money coming in every day, right? Because we have that so quick, we can get money so quick, we have to be do, do our due diligence and how we manage our money, right? So the biggest thing that I would wanna give to y'all is make sure that when y'all do step out of here, y'all elevate, because I pray that over all your guys' lives after this course ends, right? You guys truly take on this journey and y'all push forward with it, right? But when y'all do that, understand that the way you manage your money will determine how you open up your shop, will determine how you make this major game plan on this wide open door you got, yeah. right? Will determine how your kids will live and what you can truly give down to them, right? You don't want to give them down a bunch of debt, right? Right? So my thing is this. One thing I learned, and you guys can do this right now. Y'all can do this tomorrow. I suggest y'all look into this and do this. And it's creating your own business, starting your own LLC. Anything you guys make, right, like needs to go through Scott. You can make it Scott LLC, right? Like whatever you, you can name it, whatever you want, right? But if you're going to get the money anyways, you might as well run the money through your business and make it legit. Right? Like, you might not open up a shop for another five, six years, but when you're ready, that business that you established in 2021 will be an established business for five, six years already. So they're looking at you for a different scope already. Right? So that's one big thing I tell, I tell barbers, man. Make sure you, you look, you're making yourself legit and you solidifying yourself in this because that's where a lot of barbers go wrong. They don't pay their taxes. They don't get licensed. They just coast through life and then when they want to go buy a house they're looking crazy because they want to see your last two years of tax day your taxes like bro you made twenty thousand dollars how can you afford this three hundred thousand dollar home you might have a bread you might have a cash but if you don't got that paperwork they don't care about none of that right so biggest thing i definitely would want you guys to look into is getting an llc it costs a hundred dollars hundred bucks and it can sit there twenty five dollars a year just renew it every year and just sit there until you're ready to use it, right? Um, and run your money through the bank. Pay your taxes, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm on camera, so I ain't, there, just know there's a, there's a way to do the things that we need to do. But we have to do, we have to play the game right, right? And we have to solidify ourselves and legitimize ourselves. Um, go ahead, bro. Do not become lazy and don't deposit the cash that you get in your hand. Listen, it's easy to do. It's easy to lose a whole income that you gotta report. Cause you like, I don't wanna drive this 10 minutes to deposit this $20, $30, it matters. I keep telling y'all, these taxes matter. I just filed my first taxes this year. And I ain't trying to hide nothing, so I gave them everything I earned. Because like she said, when it come down to you want to buy that house, and you thought you was going to hide this, 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 and that, you ain't going to have enough money to support what you're trying to get. You thought you was getting over. You got over on yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything she telling y'all, she told me. So I reported everything, and it ain't always going to be easy to go to that bank. You know, I don't feel like it. You gonna have a hundred dollars in your pocket, hundred fifty, two hundred, three hundred. I need to go deposit this. Then you gonna go to Walmart. Doop doop doop. Now you only got a hundred dollars. You didn't lost two hundred, three hundred dollars of income. But all you had to do was go drop in the bank, and you still could have used it. So don't. She telling you all the truth. Don't play with these finances. It's. Being a barber, man, we have so much freedom. We have so we have money coming in every day. Like when we're in the shop, not in school, but once y'all get out, right? We got money coming in every day. We ain't gotta wait on no check. We can make as much money as we want. I could wake up and be like, you know what? I wanna make 
an extra two hundred dollars today. So what I do? I just go open up my books for an extra few hours, right? Nobody tells me how much I get to get paid, right? That's freedom. But with freedom, mm -hmm. as we can see in America, right, with freedom comes a lot of responsibility. So we have to manage our mindset and our money the same way as we manage our clientele, the way we manage our standards and experience. Like all of this comes back to, it's like a full circle, right? Like it all comes back, they all coexist within each other. So the way you manage your money, same way you wanna manage your clientele. Same way you manage your clientele, same way you wanna manage your business, your taxes, this, that, and the third, right? So when you get a business license, LLC, you can go open up a business account easy and like you open up the next day it takes nothing so instead of you running through your personal stuff right you legitimize your business you just run all your money through your business account you can still use the money you're just making a paper trail so when you want to open up those things you want to go buy your kids a car you want to go you know what i'm saying do anything for your family you have some already set that you've been working on for six years and that's cool where a lot of barbers, they don't even, they don't understand this. That's what's gonna set y'all apart. Is the barber and the businessman. The barber and the businesswoman. I'm a businesswoman, right? I have a shirt, I have a apparel line. One of my designs is more than a barber, more of a mogul. Cause I'm not just a barber. I started off as a barber, but I allowed that to move me through life. You know what I'm saying? I allowed that to take me to other places and start other businesses and stuff, right? while still cutting hair full time. But that's because I set up my businesses. I understood the game, right? I understood credit. Cause at the end of the day, credit is power. Cash, we can get cash all day. Yeah, that's cool. But my boy that's sitting next to me, he got all this cash in his pocket with me. I got $30,000 in credit. My name means more than cash any day. If we manage it right. Right, so for example, right? You wanna go open up a barber shop, you wanna go open up a barber studio, you might not want to deal with many people, you might want to just be dolo, right? Cost you maybe 20 grand, all right? That's on the low end, that's for like a bar, a sweet barber shop might cost you 80 grand, all right? Think of that, you're like, dang, 80 grand, that's a whole lot of money, it's really not, right? When you, when you elevate your mindset, it's really not. A lot of people be like, well, let me go get a loan. Okay, you can go get a loan. You get 80 grand, you pay it back. What happens when you go on to go open up another shop? You got to go ask for the loan again, and you pay it back with interest and all that. Or you can right now, especially while you're in barber school and all this, set up your credit and make sure your credit is good, right? And you can go get credit cards. Business credit cards and personal credit cards are two totally different things. I can go get a Capital One card in my personal name. It might give me $1,000 two grand for credit limit. Businesses, right? If you open up a business account and get a business credit card, their bottom line's around 10 grand, 20 grand. Because you're a business, so they're expect, you're, you're expected to make a profit, so they're ready to give you some money. Only if you legitimize yourself and your business. So now you got four credit cards, $20,000 each. You go open up that shop. Right? A lot of times, credit cards, they don't want you to pay them back immediately, too, depending on what kind of card you get. They might give you 12 months to start paying back. That's a whole year of business. How do we scale the business, right? So you go you go do that. So versus a loan, you pay it back, and now you have no $80,000. But you got a credit card. You got these credit cards, $80,000. What happens when you pay that money back and you, and you pay off those debts? What happens? You got $80,000 still in your pocket. And you can re keep on reusing it, keep on doing that. But you can only do that if you handle your business. And so that's the biggest thing. You told me that you guys are doing shop management, business, and all this, right? That is the foundation of what made me a great barber. I'm a businesswoman, right? I, under I started to understand the numbers. I started to understand what was power and versus what was just some leverage, right? I learned how I can leverage my name rather than the hard cash I have. Right, I started learning all these things, and I would love to come back and really get down and get on the board and really show y'all some stuff, right? Like, this isn't the last time y'all see me, but all these things, man, will elevate you, will put you in a place where people aren't looking at you as a barber like, yeah, all right. 
it still hurts my soul. Like, like pe people see me, right? They just see, I hop out of my truck, they see me, and I tell them I'm a barber. Still to this day, they're like, oh, okay. All right. They don't know what I have. They don't know. They don't see my books. They don't see versus if I'm a basketball player, like you see me, I'm tall. And it's like, oh man, like their imagination for what I might be is like, but you see me as a barber, they're like, eh, okay. Are you good? Okay. Probably make about 60 grand, right? Because as a barber, we don't, we don't walk with all of our talents. You don't see what we can really do until you sit in our chair. So it still hurts my soul that people look at me and like, yeah, okay, you a barber. And I gotta explain sometimes, like, no, no, no. I'm a different type of barber. Like, I, I don't just cut hair for $20 and make, you know, ends meet. You know, I'm, I'm in a position where I can give my children something. I'm in a position where one day I can tell my wife, hey, here's a return on your investment. You don't have to work anymore. And it started with cutting hair. But that's a choice that you guys have to make of whether or not how far you really want to take it. Because I'm here to reassure you, you can take this thing however far you want to go. I don't do I I don't do barber shows. I don't do I don't I used to cut a lot of celebrities. I cut a few now, but my main bread and butter are regular people. Regular people that I have a relationship with. Regular people that I give an experience to that come to me on a daily. I have people that will wait a month and won't go get their haircut nowhere else until they find a book, uh, spot on my booking app. I cut my boy hair. I was just looking for a spot. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, spot. I can open up my booking app and show y'all. People are booking for Christmas already because they know like, man, Summer J, we're going to have to get in. Like one of my clients told me the other day, it's like trying to get sneakers when they drop trying to get an appointment with you. Right? It's, it, but it's all of these things I'm telling you, is that's what made it this. That's what made me where I'm at today, seven years later, making pretty much $100,000, owning a home, own, have owned a partner in owning a barbershop, now own my own private uh, suite, right? This, it was all a journey. It was all a journey from being broke. Again, what I started with, I made zero dollars in the first three months of cutting hair. Nobody wanted to sit in my chair to now. So y'all see this, y'all see the journey ahead and it might seem rough and don't be times where you like, man, I ain't built for this. I ain't trying to do this. It's too hard. Just remember, whatever's hard, this means it's not impossible. This means you need to take a little bit more effort. It means you need to kick down a few more doors, right? Get past it, be, and you're gonna mess up. There's gonna be clients sitting in that chair and you're gonna see, the, you're gonna see the cut and be like, Wish I would've made it in this bed. Okay, that's gonna happen. You might mess up. I man, I had a dude here at Waves, like mine. <laughs> Never forget, I forgot the guard wasn't on it. I was done with the cut, cleaning it up, finishing the cut. Forgot the guard was on it. Zzz. No guard, all the way closed. Big line right here. I had to cut his hair so low. Like I had to spend another hour and a half cutting his hair. I gave him four free cuts after that. You know, I've been cutting his hair for years, so he, that hurt my soul, bro. Like, I went home, I didn't even speak to my wife. Like, I was, I couldn't even sleep, right? But that showed me what? That I had passion for this. Because some barber, I know barbers that would be like, whew, at least it's done. And they don't care about nothing. But you got to choose what you're passionate about. Whether it's barber, this, this stuff that I'm telling you, super, like, supersedes barbering. This is standards of life. These are codes of life that I operate with. The same way I am, how I, how I care about how my clients experience me, is the same way I care about the lady at the grocery store, how she how she experiences me. I had a client the other day, I went and did a house call for a producer I could. He's like, man, you know what? I just wanna really say thank you for your professionalism. Man, like you always on time, you know what I'm saying? You communicate, you real cool. Like I know this is how you are when you work, but I just, and I said, hey, just understand, this isn't just how I am when I work. This is how I am through and through, period. And that's why it's not hard for me to operate the way I do because this is naturally who I am. So you guys got to choose how far you really want this to go. If you don't want to open up a shop, that's cool. I was making $100,000 before I opened up a shop. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a place where I don't know if I want to open up another shop. I don't have to. 
So just know if you don't want to open a shop, that's cool. You can still make some bread, bro. You know what I'm saying? You want to open up a potentially kind of still filling it out. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. But you are sitting on a gold mine, sir. Oh, man. Man, you are sitting on. If I was in your position and I was just starting out and stuff, I'd take a picture of the shop that you're talking about. Take a picture of the city uh, city sign. I don't know if y'all have a city sign. I put that on my mirror. And be like, you know, one day I'm going to run this town. Cause you can't oh man you can't you know what i'm saying and and it's just it's easy it's not you know it's not easy the journey isn't easy but once you flip that mindset which y'all are halfway there i haven't talked to you cj yet so i don't really know where you sit and like if you want to open up a shop or matter yeah. of fact tell me a little bit about yourself How long have you been cutting? About 12. Since you was 12. Hmm? <laughs> CJ, CJ real humble, but CJ cold. Cold? He cold, but. Okay. You want to open up a shop one day? Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. One franchise? Like, what's the, what's the big, what, what is your vision? What do you, what do you dream about? Um, I guess you can say franchise. Okay. But, um, I'm not sure yet. Because I'm still thinking if I'm going to open up a shop or a school. So, yeah. I don't know, when I have a good time, I'll come. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you have vision, period, is the greatest start that you have. Right? You get people that get into this, and they have no clue what they want to do. Right? Like, I mean, if I go get in the car, and I tell my wife, let's go take a road trip, what she could, first thing she's going to ask me is, where are we going? If I be like, I don't know, she's going to be like, Let's go get our asses back in the house. And you let me know when you're ready to go somewhere, right? But to have a vision, to have a roadmap, you might not know all the obstacles you're gonna have to face. You might not know all the exits you're gonna have to take and all the detours. But at least you know what the destination might be. You might not know for sure, but what it might be, cool. At least I'm shooting somewhere, right? At least I got a target. At least I got an area where I'm trying to get to, right? And it sounds like all four of y'all at least have that. At least have a, just a foundation. You might not you might not have the two or three stories of your vision yet, and that's cool. I don't even have all of mine. My life changed every year. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I was about to quit cutting hair. I think I'm pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I have some really cold phase, you know what I mean? But I was ready to quit. I was ready to no more. Summer J ain't doing this no more, right? Glad you ain't tell me that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I I had, you know, I'm I'm real spiritual, so I had my, you know, come to Jesus moments and seeing some more light through through darkness and all that good stuff. But man, like to have a vision is what's supposed to already separate y'all from everybody. You get people that open up businesses all the time, don't have no vision, they just want to do it because they said they can do it. Okay. What, your, what do you think your business will look like in five years? No, no, same thing as this year. Then you don't need to open up no business. If you don't, if you don't want to grow, then if you don't want to grow, this might not be the profession for you. But if you truly want to grow, and you truly want to get stronger, and you truly want to switch up your mindset, you know what I'm saying? This is where it's at. Because all it's going to take, like me, like, I wouldn't be where I'm at if my mindset wasn't where it's at. Like I get up at 4.30 in the morning, I don't have to be the shop till like nine, but I give myself my time. I do my, you know what I'm saying, I write, you know what I'm saying, like I work out. But that had to have come in order for me to elevate. I have to fill up my tank before I can spend all day filling up everybody else's tank that's sitting in my chair. I talk to people all day long. All day, I hear everybody's stuff all day long. I'm pouring into people, pouring into people, but I can't do that unless I fill my own tank up. 
All right, so just remember that. That's outside of managing business and stuff, but just remember that. That's wherever you go. Fill your tank. Pour into yourself. Some people call it self-love. I call it filling up your cup. Because you can't give nobody nothing if your joint's empty. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, man, like, the biggest thing for me with this business, man, cutting hair, is that I'm more than a barber. Once you have that mindset, and once you realize that I'm more than a barber, I'm more than just someone that cuts hair. I'm a businessman. I'm a businesswoman. I can do this. That's what's going to set you completely apart from the old you. Right? Like, you got to be ready to die for this. Right, if you really trying to do something with this and not just be sitting in the, hair, in the shop cutting hair till you're 60, you gotta be willing to die for this. And what I mean by that is, you gotta be ready to kill your old self off. Cause in order to elevate, in order to elevate, you can't take them with you. You gotta become new. You gotta change your mindset. And you gotta strap on your boots cause this is not gonna be easy. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I, I would love to come back over and over and over again. Just come back and cut some hair. And come back and talk to y'all. Just spend some time with y'all, man. Like, I would love this. I've talked to you already. Like, this is not something I just want to come speak one time and go off in the wind. Like, I really want to be invested in y'all. Even after January comes and you guys go, like, nah, we can definitely stay in communication and whatever you guys need. You can ask him. Whatever you need, whatever you need to ask me, any questions, whatever, I am an open book because all I want to see is elevation in everybody that experiences me. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys have any doubt of this, any doubt of whether or not this is for you, you got to take that up with that mirror and really have a real, real good talk with yourself. Because if you want this, you can have it. And it look like $100,000 over here. And I only cut hair for $40. My price is four dollars. I truly believe that if I wanted to, I can get sixty. But I'm not that type of barber. Not right now. You just became that not too long ago. Just became that. I just yeah. switched it over to forty dollars. I used to work from ten to seven. Yeah. That's Wednesday, Tuesday through Thursday. Friday I used to come in at eight. And for the past five years, I worked on Saturdays at six a.m. In the morning, first client, 6 a.m., people coming in. I used to work till 7. Just recently, when I opened up my own suite, I cut my hours. I work from 9 to 5. Well, usually I come in earlier than that because I'm just an early bird. But I don't work after 5 now. But I had to work. Like, I had to earn that. Like, I had to pay dues for that. Like, I've had to work 14-hour days for that. You know what I'm saying? So when those days come, remember this conversation. Remember me. Like, dang, Summer J had to do it. Look where she's at. It's just the dudes you got to pay with this game. You're going to have to give out free cuts. I give out, I've given out so many free cuts. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? I gave out, look, if you don't like the cut, I'll pay for it. I'll give you the money. If, I, if you come sit in my chair and you don't like the cut, I'll give you $20. Don't even worry about it. Oh, really? Okay. I spent hours in Walmart handing out flyers. I spent hours walking campus when I first started, handing out flyers, getting denied, handing out flyers, right? Like, coming up with slogans. You send me three, your next cut's free. Like, being creative and really investing in this and giving it its, its time and paying my dues. So now I'm in a position where I cut who I want, I cut when I want, not completely cut what I want, because I can't, at the end of the day, I'm still a slave to that chair. If I don't make, if I'm not behind that chair, I make no money. My bills do not get paid. I am the breadwinner of my relationship, right? So there's a lot of pressure on that. I I want to have kids one day, so I'm already thinking like, what does my time look like? What do I want to do? Like, do I want to be cutting hair for eight hours every day? No, I don't. I'd rather cut hair when I want to. Come talk to people like y'all. Give my time away, right? Spend time with my family and have some type of freedom. I'm on my way. I'm not there yet. I'm on my way. But the only thing that's keeping me pushing is knowing that it's possible. It's possible. I've seen it. It's possible, right? I just got to take each step and pay my dues. I'm still paying dues. My dues is 6 a.m. 
when COVID happened, that was the first time I actually felt what a Saturday was like to not have clippers in my hand, to spend time with my family. That was the biggest blessing to me. Like literally all day, I cut hair. This Saturday, I'll be in there at 6 a.m. My Saturdays till November are already booked. 6 a.m. to 5. But that's just my dues. I'm paying my dues still. Been in there seven years, making almost $100,000, still paying my dues. I'm gonna be paying my dues till the day I die. That's just that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like my boy, my boy pointed at my tat. My tattoo says passion over paychecks. That doesn't mean that I'm saying be passionate, don't make no money. No, it's just saying what is the hierarchy in what I do? The way I operate, the people that truly know me know that this is how I live. You can ask my boy. Like passion over paychecks makes my dollars multiply. That's where the experience comes from, all of that, the way I talk to my clients, what you know what I'm saying, how I am, how I move. It's because I'm passion, I'm so passionate about this. The way I'm talking to y'all is because I'm passionate about that. The reason why I want y'all to elevate in this is because I'm passionate about this. I don't want no barbers coming up in this. People already look at us like, oh, you're a barber. Nah, that's because there's so many barbers that move the way they move to make people be like, yeah, all right, you ain't never on time. I don't respect you. Versus I tell them I'm a doctor. They're like, oh, wow, you're a doctor? You know what I'm saying? Because of the standards of what is taught in becoming a doctor, having medical school and all that, right? So I want to be able to set those standards for everybody that walks through this field. Have passion behind this or don't do it at all. That's just my advice. If you're not passionate about it, you're going to be a living hell. You ain't going to be able to do them 6, 6 a.m. You ain't going to be able to do them 14-hour days. You ain't going to be able to cut 25 heads back to back. You're going to tap out. I've seen it. First one in, last one out. Seeing barbers like, yeah, all right. You want to run with me? My boy texts me 5 a.m. in the morning because he knows I'm up. You want to run with me? You want to do what I do? You want to replicate the freedom I'm starting to have? You got to be passionate. That's where it starts. If not, you're going to fall off. Easy. That pressure going to hit. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to be able to bob and weave. Pressure does two things. It busts pipes and it makes diamonds. You choose which one you are. I damn sure ain't no pipe. You know what I'm saying? And that pressure get tight sometimes. That pressure get, especially when that burnout kick in, I don't want to talk. If I have grandparent pass away, but I still have to come into work and pour into other people. I had to deal with that last week. That's pressure. That's... Man, I do not feel like talking to nobody. I don't feel like doing this today. Push through. Push through. It's only eight hours. Push through. You'll get home. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I appreciate y'all time. I appreciate y'all listening. I look so forward to being invited back. Um. Yeah, man, it's, it was a pleasure. I have so much. I, I know, like, I kind of was all over the place, but just because I have so much, I want to give y'all, man, a, a whole hour won't even suffice, but that's why I want to come back, man, and be able to really get down and you know, stuff and help y'all, whatever y'all need help with, whether it's understanding business, whether it's understanding how to establish your business, whether it's understanding how to get clientele, what you should do, stuff on Instagram, how, how you should take your pictures, like all of that. I'm detailed in all of that. I showed him, hey, bro, this is how you should take your pictures. This is how you should do your videos, right? Like, I don't even do no crazy promotion on Instagram. I don't do nothing crazy. I post my stuff, put my real meaningful captions on there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I give them me, 100%, authentic. That's just who I am. And for some reason, everybody like, yo, DMs, yo, I looked at your schedule. Why can't I get on? Can I get on? I'm like, sure. I mean, I don't really have nothing, but it comes from all the little details that I put in, in my pictures, videos, messages I send to my clients, all things come from that passion. You know what I'm saying? 